One of the reasons why, there are at least two reasons why I want to show you this question. Number one, it's quite challenging, so there's a good chance a lot of you would ask me this question anyway. Um, but secondly, it's sort of a classic type of question. Uh, many questions, you can quickly see, after we've done this, you can easily design a question that's very much like this, but the, all of the equations end up different, uh, but the same kind of basic strategy will still work. So here's the premise. 72 centimeter string of wire, okay? And they're going to cut it into two pieces to form a circle and a square, like this. This is an optimization problem. What they want is the smallest area overall, the smallest total area, okay? Now, the reason why this is a question is because, for example, if this is one of the answers, it's not the only one, right? For instance, uh, maybe this is produced by slicing right across the middle, okay? And then here's a circle, here's a square. But of course, I don't have to cut there. There's nothing that tells me I have to. I could, for instance, cut up here and have a really little circle and a much bigger square, right? So at some point, I'm gonna get the minimum area and that's what the question is, okay? Um, by the way, I could just as equally have asked what's the maximum area, but that, um, I'll let you have a think about why that's a different kind of question. We'll address that another time. So how do I approach this question? What is the first thing I'm gonna do? The sum of the two areas, like the formulas here. Okay, yeah, I need to know uh, if what I'm trying to optimize for is the sums of these two areas, well, I need to know the two areas, okay? Now, interestingly, I'm actually gonna to come to that a fair way into the question. I need to define some stuff. I've got no variables or anything that allows me to even access the question, okay? So I have to choose a variable, I can assign it, they don't tell me, I don't think they tell you. They don't, right? They don't say let x equal this or y equal that. It's completely up to us, okay? Now, I would say there are two logical choices, both of which are fine, that could both answer this question, okay? When you're working out the area of a circle, what length do you use? You just use the radius, right? So I could define this length as pronumeral, choose a pronumeral, and then get every other value in this question from that pronumeral. Alternatively, what's the length that you use to find out the area of a square? If it's a square, all I need is the side length. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So I could then define that to be some letter, S for side length or something like that, and then I can work out everything else in this question in terms of that variable. Now, um, just because it was the first one that I tried, I went with the top one. I said, let's define, let's call this guy R and work out everything else. But I'll leave it as an exercise to you to try going in the other direction. Define this, and you will get the same answer because it's the same problem. It's just all phrased in different pronoun rules, okay? So, if the radius is R, so this is, let's actually set this question up. Let the radius, or let the circle radius, not that anything else has a radius in this, be r centimeters, okay? So what can I get from there? I can work out the area of the circle, right? What's the area of the circle? So I'm gonna to have to come back to that, that's important, okay? Um, I'm gonna to need to now know some information about this thing, I need to know its area and then I can add them up together. But in order to work out this area, I need to know its side length, right? So how do I get to that? Hmm. Now I could introduce another pronoun rule, but that's a bad idea. Because then I'm going to have uh, equations with multiple variables in them and it's going to be hard to solve. I can get it in terms of R, right? This square is made up the le of the leftovers from this circle. Do you agree? How much wire did I use to make the circle? It's the circumference, isn't it? That's how much wire was required to make this. So therefore, the circumference is 2 pi r, and the leftovers are used for the square. So therefore, the perimeter of the square is going to be equal to, what are the leftovers? 72, 72 take away all this stuff. You okay with that? So the question does say, this is how much wire you get, okay? 
All right, now perimeter is good, but I didn't want perimeter. I wanted area. So how do I get from area to for, from perimeter? How do I do it? I'll divide by four to get side length. So side of this is equal to that divided by four. I can simplify ever so little by saying this. How's that look? Does that look okay? And now the reason why I have the side length is so I can work out the area. This times this. What do you think? How does it look? Happy? Okay. Yes? It's all right. It's fine. Okay. So now I've gotten from a definition of a length to everything I need to know about this question in terms of that length. Okay, so now I've got both areas. I want to get A in terms of, ah, the total area, right? So the total area will be one plus the other. This plus this. Whoops, that's 36. Okay, so that's just the sum of the areas, isn't it? Now, it looks a bit messy. Just remember where you're going. What's the goal? What's the goal? I want the smallest area. Think about what technique, because you've got three of them. What technique is probably going to be most useful for you in terms of this guy? Does it look like it's going to be nice to factorize? I don't know about you, but I'm not very familiar with the factors of pi, so I might leave that one to one side. Okay? What were our other two techniques? You could complete the square, or you can use the formula for the axis of symmetry. Okay? I don't really want to complete the square with this any more than I want to factorize it. So I think, I'm sort of mapping forward in my head, I think where I'm going to go is minus b on 2a. Okay? But in order to work out minus b on 2a, I need to know b and a. So what shall I do? I could introduce a substitution here. However, there's not really any compelling reason to do so because it's already a quadratic. Admittedly, it's a quadratic with messy numbers, but it's not like it was a quartic or something with sine squared or something like that. It's already a quadratic, just a messy one. Okay? So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, see that pi r squared, right? That pi will be part of a. Do you agree? It's part of the coefficient of the squared term. But part of it's also tucked in here, so I'm going to need to expand. Do you see why I'm doing that? I need to collect some like terms. So let's do this. Do you agree that this first term is 4 pi r squared on 4? Is that okay? Yeah. Why would I write that? Why would I do that? Because this guy is on 4, so I'll write this. Now what do I do? I think I'm going to need to expand this guy once I combine them. So I'll chuck the quarter out the front. Uh, what do we got here? 4 pi r squared plus 36 times 36. 1,296. Because we all know our 36 times tables pretty well. Uh, there's the a squared. Here comes the minus 2ab. It'll be minus 72 pi r. What do you think? Yeah. And then plus b squared, which in this case will be pi squared r squared. How's that look? Does that look okay? Does my arithmetic check out. Okay, now the purpose of us doing this was to be able to get um, b and a out of it, right? Do you see the a is tucked in here and here? Yeah, where's the b? Which term is the b? Yeah, there he is. That plus 1,296, irrelevant. Why? What effect does the plus 1,296 have on a parabola? What's it do? It just moves it up and down. It doesn't change the axis of symmetry. What about this one quarter? What effect does that have? Yeah, it, it scales it up and down, but also doesn't move the axis of symmetry anywhere. So that's why these guys are the important numbers. Okay? So I'm going to write it just in one more step to make it really, really clean and obvious. Let's write down a at the front. 4 pi plus pi squared. That's how many r squareds I have. Do you agree? R squared. 
minus 72 pi r, there's the b. And I don't really care about this guy, but he's there, so I'd better write him. Are you happy?